Welcome to this video tutorial on creating terrain models from height map images in Rhino 7. A height map is a black and white image that represents the height of a series of objects as seen from a flat point of view. The white objects in the image are the highest points with the black objects being the lowest points and we can use these black and white images to create height field based images that can extrude or change a surface in Rhino to conform to a certain sort of mountainscape or other image that might be represented by this height data. Now we're going to begin this tutorial by going to this website here which is a height map generation website and I put a link to this in the description of this particular video. On this website you can locate particular places in the world and we can move around our square here which we can define a particular size of to pick up height map data based on real world locations. This is free to download via this website as well so it's a great resource if you're looking to create complex kind of height map generation or complex terrains using this method. For this particular tutorial I'm going to zoom in on this area here and we're going to define a map size of around 18 kilometers. Once you've defined the exact size of your map we can then hit refresh to refresh this data to give us the map height and the kind of minimum and maximum heights that are arranged in our particular map location here. These are going to be useful for when I create my maps in Rhino so we can replicate the correct heights in this sense. The map size is also a useful feature to pay attention to which we'll use to accurately scale the map when we bring it into Rhino. Once you've got this we can download the map on this website by clicking this download PNG height map here. And it will take a little bit of time to load up and then we'll download as an image file as we can see there. Once you've got that we're going to go into Rhino and before we load the image in we're first going to create a kind of line which we're going to use to scale our image up to. I'm going to make this line 18 kilometers long which means when I bring in my height map image I can align it to this 18 kilometer point to get an accurate scale. So we're just going to use the line tool start drawing our line. I'm in meters here so we'll just type in 18,000 meters and then use the shift key to lock this perpendicular. Then I'm going to zoom out so we see that line there. Once we've drawn that we're then going to use the height field command to generate our height map. So we're just going to type in height field into the command line and use this height field command here. It will ask us to locate our particular image that we want my particular image has come in straight into my downloads and it will usually come into your downloads folder so we're just going to copy this into the correct folder we need it for in here and from there I'm going to then select that height map image and hit open. Then it will ask you to draw out the rectangle which will define the size of our height field. I'm going to then conform this to my line here to make sure it's matching that 18,000 meter point. We then have a series of sort of parameters we can play around with with our height field. By default, your sample points might be quite low. They might be around a sort of 10 by 10. And we'll start with a 10 by 10 and then compare that to a slightly higher number of samples to see the difference in the results. Now, the height of this is currently set to 10 meters. But if I go back to the web page here, you can see that my minimum height and maximum height is 450 meters to around 3000 meters there. So actually, the kind of height that I want to set this value to will be the figure that is the maximum height minus the minimum height there. For mine, that's around a value of 2,600 meters approximately. So I'm going to use that value in here, 2,600, to set up that height. As said, I'm going to just use 10 by 10 for now, and then we're going to do the same thing again, just with a higher number of sample points to see the difference. You can also set the image as the texture of this, but because I just want the base geometry, I'm just going to leave that ticked off for now. I also want to create a surface with this rather than a mesh, which will give me a little bit more control and the ability to chop in and create this into a 3D piece of geometry once we've made it. So once you're happy with those points, we're then going to hit OK to generate our mesh here. You'll see depending on the size you create and the number of sample points you use, this might take a longer or a short amount of time to generate that particular mesh. But now you can see it's complete, we then have our height map data. Now compared to the image I've downloaded in, you'll see that this looks quite accurate in terms of the sort of peaks and valleys I'm getting from this particular height map 
and that's not really represented in this terrain. It's very loose and it's not very accurate in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and create another one here to look at how to increase the accuracy and complexity of this particular piece of terrain. So I'm going to use that height field command again. We're going to select the same height map, hit open, specify my length again, and this time I'm going to set the number of sample points to 200 by 200. Like so. When doing this, Rhino will often come up with this little warning saying that this is going to create a very dense surface in this case. We usually need to save before we proceed, so I'm just going to save this model out there just so we have a copy of it saved, just in case Rhino crashes in the generation of this height field. So we'll let that save, and then once that's done, it's going to start to load up the geometry. And there you go, it's now created our kind of height field geometry. You'll see now, because we've really upped that amount of um, sample points we're using, suddenly the geometry is much more accurate there, and we've got really nice kind of peaks and hills that are forming in this piece. You might want to always go back and tweak that just to get the accurate amount, but you'll find that the number of sample points drastically affects the result of the resulting terrain there. And if we set that to rendered view, we can start to see that particular terrain piece here. You might notice there's some flat spots on the kind of piece of terrain here, and this might be to do with the particular place you're locating your terrain from, or it might be to do with some of the settings on the map with this sort of base level setting might need to be adjusted and the height scale might need to be adjusted there as well. It's always good to play around with some of these options, bring in different maps and check the results to get an accurate form of the terrain you want. But essentially this is how the height field generator works in Rhino and you can use it to create complex maps and terrains from any location in the world. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on modeling and rendering in Rhino or V-Ray please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.